Hey everybody, welcome to Motion UX. Today we're gonna to take a look at After Effects. I wanna teach you just enough to get into the tool and start animating your designs right away. Let's dive in. Let's go ahead and open up After Effects. And here I'm using After Effects 2022. And when I open it up, you will see this splash screen here where you're able to open up previous projects and just start a new one. And for our case, we're just gonna go ahead and hit new project, which essentially just closes that splash screen down. So here on the left, you can see this is your project panel. Here is where you'll have all of your uh, compositions, all your media, all of those different types of assets that you can drag and drop into the composition that you're currently working on. This is your composition window. When you actually have a, something that you're working on, you'll see the visuals and all of those things here. And you can click here to start a new composition or import composition from a footage. And here on the right, if you're working in the default workspace, you will see all of these different panels that will auto hide each other when you click on new stuff. Here on the bottom, this is your timeline and layer panel. Let's go ahead and start a new composition. You'll see here there's a bunch of different settings. There's a basic panel, advanced, and 3D render. For the purposes of just getting in and just getting started, let's ignore the advanced and the 3D render tab. Name your composition to amazing animation. And you can go ahead and select a preset here. Typically, you'll start something around HDTV 1080. Uh, 29.97 but this depends really just on the project that you're working on so you can alter the size of your composition to whatever best fits your needs and you can also change it after the fact so don't be too worried about it at this point right here typically with ux motion design we really want to work around 60 frames per second even sometimes 120 frames per second as that becomes more of a common frame rate um, on our devices we can start with the resolution at full we always want to start at zero and change the duration to whatever you feel like your project is going to be. This also is able to be changed later. Our background color is simply just the background color of our composition. It is technically transparent until we add a background layer, but this just allows us to see what designs that we have on top of it. If we're working with darker assets, we can start with a light color background. This isn't really too important. We can change that later on as we add a background layer in our composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that as white. If you're importing your design, say from Figma to After Effects using the plugin AEUX, a lot of the composition settings will be taken care of during that import process. It will default to set 60 frames per second, and the size of your composition will match your frame that you're importing from Figma. And so a lot of this stuff you typically won't have to deal with, um, but it's good to understand where the settings are and what they do in case you have to alter those compositions that have been pre-made during that import process. Everything is set up. We have it at 60 frames per second. We're going to hit OK. And now we have our composition here. You can see in our project panel, we have that composition here. And we have it already open here in our actual timeline scrubber. And currently, we don't have anything that we can really select or animate. It's just a blank composition that is going to hold some of our animations. Next, let's get some layers into here that we can start animating. So if I go ahead and I right click our timeline here, I can go to New and Solid. And I can pick a solid color to to be whatever I want it to be and it will automatically match the size of my composition and it will name it as close to the color as it is but I will just rename that solid and so now we have this layer that's called solid and you can see as I select it I have this bounding box and if you're not seeing a bounding box you can actually go to view and click show layers control or shift command H will show and hide. Helpful to have it on most times until you're working at something at a very, very small scale. And sometimes these layer handles get in the way. And so you want to do shift command H and you can show and hide that. So now we have a layer on our timeline. And this layer is treated just the same as you would treat any other layer in any other design program. Whatever is on top is what you're gonna see first. Whatever is on the bottom is gonna be covered up by everything else. And so if I do Command D, I can duplicate this and you can see that we have all of these different layers here that we can move all around um, our composition. A little bit hard to see since they're all the same color, but you get the idea. Another very common layer type is shape layers in After Effects. If you go up here, you can see that we have our rectangle tool, a rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, and star tool. If I go ahead and select rectangle, you can see that I can click and drag and it starts a shape layer here. In this shape layer, we have this actual rectangle. We have the rectangle path that we've just drawn here. We have a stroke, 
we have a fill, and we have some transform properties within that rectangle. But you can see if I collapse that menu, it's just a layer just as my solid layer is. And I can actually click into this layer and I can change the color to whatever I want it to be. Let's dive into properties. So as I open up this layer, when I get down to the smallest point, so say we're going from contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and size. This size right here is a property of this layer. The position is a property of the layer and the roundness is a property of this layer. And these, I can actually come in here and I can alter these properties. And these properties are the things that we animate to actually show motion on the screen. The most common properties that you will encounter as you're animating your designs are position. So if we go ahead and tap P, we will bring up the position property and this will move the positioning of this entire layer and everything contained within it. Scale, if I hit S, I'm on the keyboard, I will alter the scale of the actual object or the layer and I can unlink those properties so that I can scale the width and the height independently of each other. T for opacity, also known as transparency. And then if we tap R, that will bring up our rotation property and that will rotate your layer based off of the anchor point. And if we actually go all the way up here to our uh, pan behind anchor point tool, we can actually grab this anchor point and we can move it to the center. In most cases, you will want your anchor point to be centered so things rotate and scale and move from the center out. There are definitely cases where you're gonna to wanna to move that maybe all the way to the left, all the way to the right, all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, depending on what you're trying to animate. Another super common animation in After Effects is trim paths. So if I go ahead and create this stroked layer here and I go ahead and expand this layer and do add, trim pads, you will see that we have added some new uh, properties to this actual layer. So if we go ahead and expand that, we can see that we have a start, we have an end, and we have an offset. So if I go ahead and drag this value, you can see that the actual stroke is starting to disappear along our vector path. And I can also do the end, and you can see that that changes the end. And if I do offset, you can see that that just changes what currently is visible and moves that along our path, and it cycles through endlessly. So now that we have a good idea of what are the common properties that are being animated, let's go ahead and apply some animation. So I'm going to tap P and hold shift and then tap T and S and R. And that will bring up multiple properties at the same time. So we can see them all in one view. And if I go ahead and I move this and I move along my timeline scrubber, you'll see if I play it, nothing is happening. Nothing is actually moving because we haven't applied any animation or keyframes to this layer. Beside each property, you'll see this little stopwatch. And so if I click it, you'll see that it actually lays down what is called a keyframe. And if I go ahead and move this, you can see still no animation is happening as I'm going forward in time. But if I go forward in time and move it again, you can see that a keyframe has automatically been added because it sees a change in the property. And so now if I go back in time and I play it, you can see we have some animation. And we can do this for all of our properties. So if we go ahead and we select scale, rotation, opacity, and we go forward in time, holding shift to lock it in place with, my, with our other keyframe, we can change these properties any way that we want to. And because these properties are being changed, a keyframe is automatically being put down. So now if we play it, we got all of these properties animating at the same time. And if we want to be able to look at our animation without having to pause and play and pause and play again and again and again, we can actually change the in and out point of our preview. And this bar at the top here is our work area start and our work area end. And so if I were to drag that all the way over here, holding shift so it snaps in place, if I play it, you will see that now it loops between our work area start and our work area end. If I tap my end key, it will automatically move the work area end to wherever my timeline scrubber is. And likewise with the first one, if I go ahead and tap the B key, it will change the work area start to wherever my timeline scrubber is. So as we preview this, you can see that we have some motion happening in After Effects, and this is amazing, right? We can also tell that the motion is not very like smooth or fluid or natural, like it feels a little bit off. That's because we're only using linear keyframes. If we go ahead and we select all of these properties and we do F9, 
you can see that our keyframes change to these hourglass type of shape. And what we've just done is we've added easy easing to these keyframes. So now as we preview, we can see that the speed starts slow, it speeds up to fast, and then it slows down again at the end. The reason why this feels a little bit more natural is because nothing in reality starts and stops instantaneously. There's always some sort of ease in or acceleration and deceleration as things start moving and stop moving. Oftentimes you need a little bit more control over your easing. Let's focus just on our rotation easing. So if we click the stopwatch of all the other properties, it will remove everything that has been applied to that specific property. And if we play, we can see just the rotation is happening. We want more control on how it's coming in and how it's going away. Maybe we want it to start fast and then end very, very slow. If we go ahead and we select this property and we click this graph editor tool right here, you can see that this is a visual representation of our speed over time. To see this a little bit better, we can select those keyframes and select fit selection to view. And so now we can see this entire easing happening over time. And so now we can see this easing curve a little bit more clearly. And if I were to select this first keyframe and we change it all the way up here, we can see how it's changing our animation. So it's starting very, very quick and then it's starting to taper off and get a little bit slower. We can also undo that command Z and we can do the opposite. We can say it starts very slow and then it ends very, very quickly. The graph editor is amazing. It allows us to get very, very specific with our easings within inside of our motion. Let's say we wanted to change the easing within our position keyframes. Let's go ahead and make a little animation where it's moving down the screen and we'll do F9 to do easy ease and we can see it looks okay at this point. Let's go ahead and get into the graph editor. And you can see this looks very different than what we had before. That is because this specific property has two values associated with it. It has the X position movement and the Y position combined into one property. And by default, you cannot alter these easing curves in the graph editor. You can, however, if you right click the graph editor and go to the speed graph, you can change the speed of the curve. And the speed graph editor isn't as easy to work in. But if you see, we can take this first keyframe and we can pull it all the way to the right. And you can see that you can see that it's going to start slow, get fast, and then end slow. And we can pull this one all the way over here so that it ends very, very quickly. And so you can see that we can duplicate a similar type of easing that we had with our rotation, but it just happens a little bit differently here. Alternatively, we can actually right click the actual position and we can separate the dimensions. Oftentimes when we're dealing with screen based motion, we're not moving diagonally that often. And so it, sometimes it's easier to just focus on just the X position movement or just the Y position movement. So if we go ahead and just look at the X position, we can right click and go back to our value graph. And you can see that we have this easing curve here. And we can go ahead and we can move this to be what we want it to be. So maybe it starts off very slow and it ends very fast. And you can actually see our path is being affected by that. And it feels a little bit weird because we don't have the same easing applied to the Y position. So if we go ahead and go to the Y position and we do, it starts off slow and it ends fast. You can see now, that it's moving more in a straight diagonal line because the X position and the Y position easing matches each other. And if we go ahead and remove the Y position, we can just take a look at X position easing and we can see what it's doing a little bit clearer. Typically when you're working in this motion UX space, you will see three common types of easings. You will see this one where it's an ease out and ease in, where it starts off slow, speeds up and ends slow. This usually is used for things that are on screen already and they're moving to another position and you will still see it on screen. You will also see this type of curve where it eases in and then it gets very, very quick at the end. And typically I like to refer to this as an exit easing because typically you will use this in cases where something is leaving or being removed from the screen. So it starts very slow and then it speeds up as it leaves and ease out where it starts off very, very quickly, and then it slows down as it ends. And this I typically refer to as an enter easing, because typically you see this as something is not on screen when it starts, and then it, it very quickly enters the screen and slows down as it reaches its final resting place. Another common task done in After Effects is called pre-comping. So if I go ahead and expand my layers panel and we right click our layer, we can go ahead and pre-compose this specific layer. And we will, move all the attributes to the new composition, and we will hit OK. Nothing has changed with our animation, but you will see that this layer icon has changed, and we have a new composition in our project panel. And if we go ahead and we double click on this, you can see it opens up a brand new composition, 
and our shape layer is in there. You can think of compositions the same way you would think of symbols or components in a tool like Figma or Sketch. And if I go ahead and take this layer and I duplicate it and I move it over, you can see it's the exact same animation happening. If I were to go inside of this layer and say I add something to this animation, like we pull up the position property and we actually make it a little bit bigger and we make it, we copy this keyframe and we move it to the back so that it loops. We go back to our other composition. We can see that the animation has been updated for both of our compositions because it's referencing the same animation. What's great about this is we can make things and reuse things that we commonly do in our animations. And so maybe there's a specific uh, micro interaction of a menu opening or a drawer opening or closing or something sliding in, you're able to create that animation once and reuse it across all of your compositions and all of your animations. And so it becomes very, very powerful. So say we're done with our awesome animation and we want to go ahead and we want to export this as a video or something to share with our product owners or our designers on our team. If we go up here to file, we can go ahead and do export and we can do add to render queue or we can do add to Adobe Media Encoder. Typically, I go with adding to Adobe Media Encoder if I'm needing to have an actual video file to share because I there's a lot more you can do with Adobe Media Encoder to compress and customize the rendering properties of your actual video. But to make it simple, we can just go ahead and do add to render queue and that will render it right here in After Effects. The downside of rendering in After Effects is that you can't do anything until the render is complete. So if you're working on multiple projects and you want to be able to render something as you continue to work, use Adobe Media Encoder because that will render in the background as you continue to work in your file. And in here you have all of the options of what is your render settings, what are your output settings, all of those sorts of things so you can get it tuned into the specific quality that you're looking for. But this, if we go ahead and we render this, it will go ahead and do its magic. And then that renders that video file to my desktop. The most typical way you see some of these animations shared is through a GIF format. Exporting a GIF through After Effects by default is not a straightforward process. You have to export first a PNG sequence, you import that into Photoshop, and then you export a GIF from there. Because it's a task I do fairly frequently, I need something that automates that process. And to help with that, I use plugins. GIF Gun is a plugin that allows you to create GIFs from After Effects with a single click. And you just click once, it will render out a video, convert it to a GIF, and save it for you right where your project file is. Flow is another plugin specifically for easings that simplifies the graph editor interaction and allows you to have some standard easings to apply. And so all I have to do is select my keyframes. I select a specific easing that I've already created before and I apply it. And now that easing has already been applied to all of the keyframes. What's awesome about this is that these are the keyframes that I use on every single project. And these are the Bezier values that I give to my developers when they implement my animations in their production environment. This tool helps me make sure that I'm always using the same easings every time I attack a project. AEUX is another plugin that allows me to take all of my designs from Figma and import them into After Effects. And I actually have a video on that if you want to learn a little bit more about how to set up that process. Body Moving is the last plugin I'll talk about. And this is how we take our After Effects animations and export them as a Lottie file that we are able to use in production environments and natively render our animations on the web or on iOS or Android. And I also have a video talking all about Lottie, what it is, how to use it, and how to use body moving as well. And as you really start getting more comfortable with After Effects, you'll want to customize your workspace to be most efficient for the way that you work. And so we can actually take these plugins and drag them to be anchored into our workspace environment in After Effects. And as you start seeing what you use a lot of, when you use certain tools, you will customize this to fit your needs. And so I actually have one saved here that has all of the plugins in the specific order that I need them to be in so that they're very accessible and easy for me to use. And that's it, everybody. A brief overview of After Effects teaching you just what you need to know to get started animating your designs right now. Catch you guys next time.